President Donald Trump, as you know, made history this week, probably not in the way he wanted to, though. The former president convicted of felony crimes in a New York courtroom. A jury finding him guilty of 34 felony charges of falsifying business records to hide a $130,000 payment of hush money to adult film star Stormy Daniels. Those charges are Class E felonies, the lowest tier in New York State. Mr. Trump denounced the conviction while President Trump praised the rule of law, saying that no one is above the law. As everybody saw, it was a rigged deal. It was a rigged trial. But we're going to make America great again. We're going to make it better than ever before. November 5th, remember, November 5th is the most important day in the history of our country. Now he'll be given the opportunity, as he should, to appeal that decision, just like everyone else has that opportunity. That's how the American system of justice works. Well, the case was brought by Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg. This was Bragg's response to the conviction. And while this defendant may be unlike any other in American history, we arrived at this trial and ultimately today at this verdict in the same manner as every other case that comes through the courtroom doors, by following the facts and the law and doing so without fear or favor. Okay, so now Judge Juan Merchant will decide Trump's sentencing in July, specifically July 11th. Each felony conviction punishable by up to four years in prison. Many people say it is unlikely that Trump will get prison time. For more on the next steps in this case, we want to welcome back in friend of the show, Mushtaq Gunda. He is a law professor over at Georgetown and a former federal prosecutor. Good to see you again. It's good to see you. You and I were, were conversing this week while this was going on. You had a feeling of the way this was headed. Talk to me about the timing of this jury. I think it was just about 12 hours they had this case. Does that tell you right there that they had made up their mind and they were maybe circling back to make that final decision? Oh, interesting. No, I think maybe just the opposite. You know, I, I was listening to D.A. Bragg there on that video clip, and, you know, one of the things that struck me um, over the last maybe three, four days is how um, regularly this jury process sort of uh, went. You know, the, the questions that the jury had for the judge, the ways in which they asked for the instructions, the length of time. All is about what one would expect from a regular sort of seven-week trial. Uh, you know, a, a day and a half of deliberations, pretty typical. My heart goes out to all of you who are legal analysts who have to talk about this while it was going on. We are essentially Neil Armstrong on the moon here right now because this has never happened before. So, you know, a, a lot of the you know, subjective guesses about what's going to happen are, are just that right now. But what can you tell us? If Donald Trump had not been a former president of the United States, what would he really be facing right now? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, it's, it's a hard question for a, a couple of reasons. I think if he weren't the former president, he probably wouldn't be in this position. Mm -hmm. uh, but primarily because most people that are uh, facing these sorts of charges likely would have pleaded guilty in the first place. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, to be in this position... Uh, on these facts is a little bit uh, unusual. One of the things we're hearing from Trump camp right now is that they are looking to appeal this. That's not a surprise. However, one of the things they're specifically talking about, not that they just didn't like the verdict, but that you had, you know, Alvin Bragg, a Manhattan district attorney, basically charging on federal election law. Right. How common it is, is that? Is it possible for a, a local prosecutor to prosecute federal law. Yeah, um, unusual, um, not, uh, it's not unprecedented, mm -hmm. but it's unusual for this to occur. And so I think that President Trump has some grounds for appeal there that, that are plausible. Uh, I expect that he will uh, appeal on those grounds, include, and then also mm -hmm. um, some grounds on some evidentiary rulings. So how much of a house of cards is this? There's 34 counts he was convicted right. of. Could the whole thing fall down, or are we just talking about some of the counts? No, the 34 counts are um, basically the same count 34 times over. Yeah. You know, some falsifying of the business records and the payments to Michael Cohen and then Stormy Daniels. Uh, so if one falls, they are all likely to fall. Um, you know, the question is, how strong will those, those arguments be? And then the question naturally is, what then after that? Will Bragg, you know, 
theoretically bring these charges again, whittled out in the version that the uh, appeals court maybe had found? It depends a lot on what the appeals court uh, finds. You know, there are ways in which the appeals court can dismiss the case uh, with what is called prejudice, which would uh, not allow the district attorney to re uh, refile these charges, there's a way in which he might be able to, if, if President Trump were to, uh, were to win. All right, so what happens between now and July 11th, the sentencing date? Are there going to be parole hearings? Does he have to meet with a probation officer? What goes on? That's right, yes. Uh, so he will have to meet with uh, the probation service. Uh, there will be a probation uh, report that comes out and a recommendation from that office to the judge about what the sentence should be. Uh, and, you know, we'll see. And I think there's a range of possibilities from uh, jail time on the one hand to probation on the other, and maybe a couple things in between. It's a remarkable times we are living in. Mushtaq Gunga, good to talk to you again right now, and uh, we will have you back because we're not finished with this yeah. uh, by a long shot. Well,